In this video, I will explain the diffusing update algorithm, or dual, for EIGRP, and how it helps to select successor and feasible successor. Routing protocols help the routers to select the best path to exit the data packets. EIGRP do not use UDP or TCP protocols to send the update packets on a network. Dual algorithm make the EIGRP convergence easy and fast. The basic thing maintained by EIGRP is the routing table updates from neighbor's router. This copy of routing table help for calculate the cost of path to a remote destination network. So now the router is known the best path for the data sent to remote destination network. Now suppose the best path goes down, then the router immediately check the topology table for feasible successor. Diffusing update algorithm decide the best path for the data transmission for EIGRP. The main function of diffusing update algorithm is to prevent routing loops. When the router working on EIGRP protocol, diffusing update algorithm is a convergence mechanism system that is created to be used by the EIGRP protocol only. The dual function on many scenarios by calculation of multiple terms used by EIGRP. The full name of diffusing update algorithm is dual finite state machine. Dual works when the main path selected by EIGRP is went down, or it is required to select another path. The dual algorithm help to select the best alternative path for router. EIGRP avoids recalculation whenever possible because recalculation is processor intensive. EIGRP avoid recalculation by maintaining a list of backup routes that Dual has previously found for loop-free. If the primary route in the routing table not working, the best backup route is straight away added to the routing table. Dual works when the existing network topology changed or any existing device goes down. The topology table, neighbor table, and routing table refers by diffusing update algorithm immediately to select the best path by the EIGRP to send the data to its destination. The path selection done with one thing taken to avoid, and that is loop-free routes. In other words, we can say the dual algorithm immediately come in action when no feasible route are available, and it start computing the best alternative route. Let understand what is dual finite state machine, or FSM. The dual finite state machine, or FSM, is EIGRP root calculation engine. This FSM contains logic to calculate and compare routes in an EIGRP network. It is an abstract machine, not a mechanical device with moving parts. It classifies the different state of possibilities states that something can go through what proceedings cause those states, and what proceedings result from those states. FSMs are not included in the scope. We have four routers in our design, router A, B, C, and D. We are going to calculate the best path to the destination network which is 192.168.3.0, and it is behind the router C. EIGRP uses a rich set of metrics called bandwidth, delay, load, and reliability. These values will be put into a formula, and each link will be assigned with a metric. In the topology, I have assigned some values on the interfaces. If you would look at a real EIGRP router, you'll see the numbers are very high and a bit annoying to work with. The router C will advertise to the router B its metric towards the destination. Basically, the router C is saying to router B, it costs metric value of 50 to reach the destination network, 92.168.3.0. This is called the advertised distance, or the reported distance. The router B has a topology table, and in the topology table, it will save this metric value. You understand that the advertised distance to reach the destination network is 50 from the router B. We are not yet done. Since there is something else that the router B will save in its topology table. We know the advertised distance is 50, since this is what router C told us. We also know the metric of the link between router B and the router C, since this is directly connected, and this metric value should be added to the metric value advertised by the router C. The router B now knows the metric for the total metric value to the destination, 
and this total metric value is called the feasible distance which is 150, and it will be saved in the topology table. Let's see how router 1 take these values. The router B will advertise to the router A its metric towards the destination. Basically, the router B is telling to the router A, it metric value is 150 to reach the destination network. From the router A point of view, this is called the advertised distance or reported distance. Similarly, router A has a topology table, and in this topology table it will save this metric, the advertised distance to reach this destination is 250. Let's verify what happens when EIGRP feasibility condition satisfies, but no backup or alternate path to reach destination network. EIGRP feasible successor is a backup node that can satisfy the EIGRP feasibility condition. Feasibility condition simply means that the backup router should be loop-free. Let's examine the topology to understand how EIGRP finds loop-free alternate backup node. From the router A's point of view, the router B and the router D are the equal cost routers. As a result, both paths can be used in the network design. The router A installs both router B and router D, not only in the EIGRP topology table, but also in the routing table. There is no backup route in the topology, since the router A uses both routers to reach the destination network behind the router C. Let's verify what happens when EIGRP feasibility condition satisfies. The metric value of the router D to the router C is 150. In order to satisfy the feasibility condition for the router A, the metric value of the router D to the router C should be smaller than that of the router A, B, and C's total metric. Since metric value 150 is lesser than of the total metric value of the router A, B, and C, router D can be used as a backup router by the router A to reach the router C and the destination networks behind the router C. Router D is installed in the EIGRP topology table of router A. I will explain what will happen to the root if it is installed in the EIGRP topology table instead of the routing table. Also, let's examine one more example so that we can understand when router D cannot be installed in the routing table or EIGRP topology table of the router A. Let's verify what happens when EIGRP feasibility condition is not satisfied. The link cost of router D to C is 250. In order to satisfy the feasibility condition for router A, the link cost of router D to C should be smaller than that of router A to B to C. Since metric value 250 is greater than the metric value of router A to B to C, and looking all these aspects, the router D cannot be used as a backup router by the router A to reach the router C and the networks behind the router C. In this design, the router D is not a feasible successor or the backup router simply because it doesn't satisfy the EIGRP feasibility condition. What if router D to C metric value is 200? In that case, since metric value 200 is equal to the metric value of router A to B to C, in this case also, the router D cannot be used as an EIGRP feasible successor. The metric value of router D to C should be smaller than that of the router A to B to C. Now that we have learned how to find EIGRP feasible successor. When the router D satisfies the EIGRP feasibility condition, it is installed as a backup router in the EIGRP topology table of router A. In order to understand this concept, I will first examine how EIGRP converges if there is a failure without feasible successor. Let's assume that the router A to B link fails. Since there is no feasible successor, the router A will send an EIGRP query to the router D. The router A will ask the router D whether it has an alternate route. For the router D, the successor is router C to reach the same destination network. That's why the router D answers router A's query. But obviously, there is a delay in this process. Now, let's examine what happens if the router D satisfies EIGRP feasibility condition. If router A to B link fails, the router A doesn't send an EIGRP query to the router D anymore. 
Rather, the router A immediately takes all the routes from EIGRP topology table and installs them on the routing table without running EIGRP dual algorithm. Thus, in the case of failure, EIGRP feasible successor reduces the convergence time by avoiding running EIGRP dual algorithm again. That's it. I hope you found this video helpful to understand the diffusing update algorithm for EIGRP. For any query or suggestion you may drop a comment below or contact us. Your suggestions are always welcome. Please like the video. Subscribe to the channel and share this video.